We've got two more streams today and Friday before the the Legacy 10K. So really putting our nose to the grindstone here, just jamming out our last couple of leagues before uh, before I do battle. I think we're gonna sh run back the same list we played yes or not yesterday Monday. Five would with it. The change from Brewmaster Crusader did literal nothing. I think I still might want Brewmaster. I might bounce back. Could also like bounce a second Spirit Keeper. It's like not insane. Don't really know what I want the slot to be, but it's like very minor tweak. So I'm gonna keep running the Crusader a little bit. See if I run into Grixis today. See if it comes up as relevant at all, or if it just gets bolted. There's a chance that even like Brewmaster is maybe better than Crusader against the Grixis strategies, because like all the four color the four color decks are. Playing a lot less Baleful Strix. So, like, maybe Brimaz is even good there because, it, like, it doesn't die to Lightning Bolt. And if there's no Baleful Strix, it can attack for a lot of value. But, I mean, it's, it's still not immune to, like, Fatal Push and stuff, which uh, Crusader would be. So, I don't know. It's, it's a tough call, obviously. But we'll just jam another League like this. Should not make uh, any changes that are too terribly drastic uh, until after the 50 at least. Thanks <laughs> for the 100 bits, Moxel. <laughs> Fuck yeah, Mirror and Crusader. Never been a big fan of Mirror and Crusader myself. But you know, all cards have their time. Except for, uh, except for Tithe Taker. It's never Tithe Taker's time. All right. Let us get the show on the road. Wow, this hand is not very good. This hand is a lot better. What am I shoving to the bottom here? Tomic helps us curve out. We need two lands. We need Vile. So it's between Recruiter and Prelate. Prelate's stronger at its base value. Recruiter's better for, like, grinding and stuff. Prelate's probably better game one against, like, Delver. Recruiter's better against, like, non-Delver decks. Prelate's better against Combo. We're there for Recruiter against, like, Rixus and Miracles. Time to take a bunch of people with Crusader plus equipment. This is definitely a keep. It's definitely between these two, which one I shove to the bottom. Kind of want to shove Prelate to the bottom just because Recruiter is so much value. Like, combo is pretty uh, on the downswing. If we're against Delver, we already have a pretty strong start, and like we, recruiting for stuff isn't terrible. Not sure if that's correct. Hard to, hard to gauge that stuff in the blind, though, obviously. Millions to five. Cool. Hopefully that means that we're winning and we're not dead. I always get nervous that moles to five mean we're just getting like turn one grizzle branded or something. I need to get a better light for the stream, like a soft light. Keeping recruiter keeps me more flexible. Yeah, exactly. We have a, we have like a strong start, and I think I just would want to have a better plan against whatever random bullshit might show up. Prelate is definitely more swingy. Like, it's either going to be, like, very good or, like, not good, probably, most likely. Oh, Dredge? Uh-oh. Never mind. It didn't matter. We're dead. Well, Tomic doesn't exactly do a lot here. I'm probably supposed to do Wasteland the Gemstone Mine, so like at least he can't cast any. They can't cast any spells. But I imagine if they had like a Breakthrough or a Looting, they would have just cast that instead. Just like Breakthrough, uh, Sack Lady or some shit. But it's probably better than like getting a Tomic into play. It does slow me down. I could cast a Recruiter on turn three though if I don't Wasteland. And I could recruit for, like, a Stoneforge Mystic to get, like, Batter School or GTA. Maybe that's actually the plan. To, 
like try to survive that way. I don't think the wasteland's gonna take me very far. What's up, Swagahod? They could have careful study. Would they not want a careful study crack LED still? I mean, I guess the future dim first is like pretty fine. They also could just like have another land. If they wanted to get dredgers in the bin, they could have just careful city crack LED, right? They also didn't pitch the future imp, so I guess they just don't have anything. They just like kept a five. Kept a five with like these cards and hopes to find like a dredger off the top or something. I don't know, I feel like you just want to go to four. This is 10k crunch time. I'm on mobile. Oh, uh, I'm just there. This is a 10k I'm going to in like three days, so it's crunch time for testing. I'll block. I'll do it. So I'm kind of scared and want to wasteland this Cephalid Coliseum. <laughs> But Recruiter for, like, Stoneforge Mystic or something seems better here. If we can get GTA online, we can actually, like, manage um, Bridge from Below before my opponent gets going. Thali doesn't do jack here. Probably don't even want to attack. If my opponent drew, like, a dredger, we get punished pretty badly, though. They'd it, have to be, like, exactly grave. It's hard for them to actually get seven cards in the graveyard to activate Coliseum, right? If they drew Grave Troll, they get six. They can pitch against seven. Okay. Imp might do it, too. Discard Imp. Draw Step. Imp. Discard Imp. Discard whatever other garbage in their hand. Yeah. I think any dredger does it, but... I think, especially game one, you just kind of need to get lucky against Dredge. Also, don't think we're attacking with Tomic. I think we'd rather just not get hit for two. It's coming down to how quickly we can manage my opponent's life total. Or how quickly we can manage my, like, my own life total. My opponent's uh, threats. All right, well, that... Oh, that might kill me, because they have LED. Or not kill me, but that might turn on... Oh, they can't turn on their... They can't activate their Coliseum, though, unless they find a land, too. Because they'd have to spend their whole... All their mana looting. They hit a, a Stinkweed. I'll blow up their graveyard here, since it's pretty important in this matchup. <laughs> Let's see what they hit. No Cabal Therapies is good for me. Two Narcs is kind of obnoxious. We need to get this GTA Online ASAP. Just gonna toss away a Future Dump. Alright. Oh shit, yeah, they get zombies, that's why. Probably still worth the block. Yeah, I can block things on the ground, I can't block things in the air except with Tomic. Do I take this vial up to three or no? I'm definitely wastelanding this, uh, maybe I'm not definitely wastelanding, they're just dredging next turn so they can't actually activate the Cephalon Coliseum. Disposable Hero, thanks for the uh, five-month resub. Give me your DNT powers. I'll do my best. Appreciate your continued support. I think I want to take this up to three. We have more threes to draw, especially like some relevant threes, like Flicker Wisp and stuff. Or this Recruiter. Recruiter's not bad. We can't get GTA Online, unfortunately, because we didn't draw a land. 
I don't think I'm supposed to wasteland the Cephalid Coliseum, because they're definitely just going to dredge Grave Troll. I can just play Mom and get GTA into play with Stoneforge. And get, getting Mom into play gives me more excellence to, uh, to like try to ping off all these bridges and stuff. Yeah, I don't think I need to wasteland this. Because it's their only land. I suppose we could just cast this GTA. Attacks. Hopefully they don't hit too many um, bridges here, and like bridges and therapies would be really rough for me. Hogak. Mm, it's kind of obnoxious. I can deal with it. No extra bridges. Crusader. Crusader plus GTA. So, did those imps not have flying last turn? Could I have blocked them both? Crusader plus GTA is a pretty strong play versus uh, this board state. Get a lot of GTA counters. And it like blocks Hogak pretty well. Fortunately, I don't have the Crusader right now, but... Um... Seems fine. We could get like Prelate and Prelate on one to turn off uh, Therapies, but we're going to be able to blow up all our bridges and stuff, so like Therapy's not as concerning. I kind of just want Mirror Crusader to try to beat this Hogak better. Oh, jeez. <laughs> this is a pretty good draw. Uh, quick. So they have a zombie untapped. They have two zombies untapped. So what's the best way to do this? We Caracas the Hogak, equip to just a recruiter, and probably just like pro black it and attack. And we probably don't pro black it. If they want to block, I just break the bridge for free, right? Nice skill, Krogus. I think we were fine without it, but it certainly helps. You can have that back. My opponent wants to break their bridge for free. I think I'll just take it and get my two counters. Yeah, that's fine. just kill the zombie too. I have an extra GT count GT counter to clear more things if I want to. Let's just kill the zombie while we're here. And we'll just wasteland the Cephalid Coliseum just in case. So when they're draw step, they like mill over a bunch of bridges, we can just ping off our other recruiter. 
uh, no bridges. Didn't come here not to slay zombies. Yeah, we're looking pretty good here. Our opponent had a pretty clunky start, though. Obviously. Is opponent just casting the Hogak? Like, they know how that's gonna go, right? I still have the Caracas in play. Crusader is about to dick punch my opponent, Moxel. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't have used the counter because I, like, probably have lethal. I probably had lethal with two counters or something. Seems like kind of a waste to bring back that Icarid. If that's all they were going to do. Uh, yeah, I'll just go hog wild. Uh, we pump into a 4-4, four, four, punch them for 4, and then punch them for 8. That's not lethal, so I'll just give this pro blue. Dick punch my opponent. Didn't have lethal with a counter at least. I, I didn't do the math, but we're probably some amount off. I think we're good here. <laughs> Get back some Icarids, sure. Two counters deal 16. Pump it to a 6-6 six, six, and then pump it to a 10. Yeah, that makes sense. That tracks. Uh, that is no bridges. Gonna try your best. Attack here. Solid. I like your moxie opponent. You can have the Hogak back. <laughs> opponent is taking game actions. <laughs> That is accurate. I'll take three. You got me. All right. Looks like we're dealing them um, 12 plus 16. 28 damage. That's pretty strong. Pretty solid line. Opponent is continuing to take game actions. You got it. You got a Hogak opponent. I'm impressed. Pro blue. Pump. Pump, pump, punch. Maybe you'll forget to kill them. You know what, let's just deal more damage. I, I want it, I want it. <laughs> We're gonna keep pumping. Bring that one back. <laughs> you got what you came for, Moxall. <laughs> Crusader dick punching. <laughs> Are we dunking on Dredge? Yeah, we dunked on him game one, which very rarely happens, but they had a very lackluster mold of five. And then we successfully dick punched them with Crusader holding Gta. But anyway, let's sideboard for the dredge matchup. We got 
Yeah, they played a Hogak, and then we skillfully top decked the Caracas. I'm pretty sure we could have beat the Hogak even if we didn't draw the Caracas, but it was it was amusing that it was also Caracas. <laughs> Definitely boarding these. I don't really like Chalice except on the play, I think, when you like play it on turn one to turn off LED. Does Needle on Cephalid call him worth, call him worth anything? Probably not. It hits exactly Calcium Putrid Imp. Yeah, Caracas is great. Uh, what sucks? Tomic and Revoker suck. Sword of Fire and Ice sucks. Uh, Jailer sucks. Flicker Wisps kind of suck. Red Caracas win. Oh no. I don't want other colors getting a Caracas because then everyone starts playing Caracas and then Thalia gets really bad. Only the white decks get to play Caracas or the decks that want to play a essentially colorless land for the utility. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't really mad. Rude. Don't want any other stuff. Sometimes I'll bring in Relic Order just because, like, Silent Graves don't exist. But usually they don't. people aren't boarding in Silent Graves when I get and Taxes. I think this is probably fine. Haven't you heard x ones are unplayable? It's what people keep telling me, and then I keep winning, so... I think I'll probably cut like two flicker wrists for the chalices for a game three or something. This hand does not do it. It is turn three, uh, Gite, and we have Crusader, but I. No. Alright, I'll keep this. We have. We can blow up bridges if we want. This looks fine. It looked really slow for on the draw. Legitimately, the only TNT player I know who's doing well. Yeah, that's what I keep hearing as well. I think we're just gonna push this flicker to the bottom. We, I think we want extra Thalias to pop bridges. There's also a chance that we're just gonna surgical bridge. So we don't want the extra Thalia. I think I would have kept that something like that on like a like maybe a six or like a five, but against Dredge, like you just I think you ship almost every seven that doesn't have hate. There's a chance that we're just surgicaling uh, bridges, so like the extra Thalia is just actively bad. This Flicker Wisp isn't doing jack, so I think we're going to ship the flick. Yeah, I think I'm going to hedge my bets and ship the Flicker Wisp. Like, there's not, it's not likely that the Flicker Wisp is going to be super relevant. Looting. Tame start. Discard Thug Grave Troll, sure. Oh, less Tame Start. Oh, they're not. Gonna cast Looting this turn, I guess. Interesting. I can't, like, punish them with Surgical. They have another Dredger. I'm gonna play Mom here. I don't think holding up Plow is very helpful. Are they gonna try to like ther? Is this like Cabal therapy me? What's up, Min? Cabal therapy me, then flashback looting or something. But like they do, have, they'll they'll dredge here unless they unless they don't dredge and then cast Cabal therapy to name Surgical. Nope, they dredge. There's a bridge from below. Do you have to do anything now? No, because you can just Surgical in response to triggers. Oh, that's a Coliseum. Well, this is gonna get really scary. There are two bridges. Oh, that's a Dread Return. Uh-oh. Is the Dread Return still in their deck? I, do I need to be concerned about that? Uh, if we search all their bridges, they can't Dread Return this turn. They could hit another Narc, actually, and Dread Return something, but I can beat anything they can Dread Return currently, because we have Plow. So I think this is fine. Surgical Narc. I could Surgical the Narc Amoebas, but I can't blow up the bridges for so long, and they're gonna crack Coliseum this turn, and probably just hit a bunch of Icarids. And if they, like... And then if they make a bunch of Zombies, I don't think I can beat them, right? I could Surgical the Narc Amoebas, but... I don't think that's, like, a super... 
winning plan. So, yeah, I think I'm sort of circling the bridges. I'll let them sack first, though. I mean, this is like me pausing here is like super telegraphing surgical attraction, but I don't think they can really do anything about, anything about it. Yeah, I'm surgicaling this turn. I'm going to surgical the bridge from Bolos. This is fine. I'm just heavily ter telegraphing the surgical. Pausing is higher <laughs> if you don't have surgical. That's that's true. I'm just gonna like mill their whole deck here. There's a lot of stuff. Two Icarids. Um. It's another Narc trigger. They still can't. They can't. Um. They don't have anything scary to dread return for, right? If they just dread return back like a, a big a grave troll, I just plow it. And they can't therapy me and dread return this turn because I'm going to kill all the bridges. They just dread return back an Icarid? What are they doing? Do they just think that the bridges are gonna beat me? <laughs> they just wanted to get a shit ton of bridge triggers? I feel like getting back Grave Troll or at least like Hogak was way better there, right? <laughs> I think they just wanted to sack it for a bunch more zombies. When it says, wow, that was unexpected. I'm uh, very confused. Get this one out of their deck here. When it literally said, wow, that was unexpected. <laughs> Thought we very heavily telegraphed it, and it's not like Surgical's uncommon tech. Very confused. Um, so yeah, they just don't have anything. They brought in like two nature's claims and that's it. Okay, cool. Did they not see the super telegraph surgical? Maybe they thought, just thought the pauses were me looking through the graveyard. I don't. I don't know. Therapy's me sure. I mean, we do have to beat this Hogak, which we currently can't. Wait, therapy for rest of these. Okay, cool. Never mind. We can beat Hogak. Wait, no, because they can get back two Icarids. And then therapy me. Wait, how many? They have one therapy left. Um, if they they only have two Icarids though, so they can't cast Hogak and therapy me this turn, right? If I leave up or if I cast Thalia, they can get back two Icarids and then therapy my Plow and then cast Hogak the following turn. They can't beat it, right? We can hold up Plow and Plow and Icarid and upkeep. That's also true. And then they therapy both my Thalys with the other Icarid. And then... As soon as they hit another Icarid, we're just going to get iced by this Hogak. Unless we can find something. If we hold up the Plow, and they cast Therapy using one of the Icarids, we just Plow the other anyway. If they cast the Hogak, we Plow the Hogak. But they already know, so they shouldn't. I think it's better to not cast Thalia, though. Thalia doesn't do anything... Thalia actually helps block all their Icarids, right? I guess Mom does that too. Yeah, I think we're supposed to pass here. And hope we can find something to deal with uh, Hogak. Yeah, they could take the wrong choice, but I don't think they will. Yeah, Plow also, yeah, Plow kills an Icarid permanently. Like, Thalia kind of does too, because they're not going to take Thalia off the board ever. I don't think I would need to necessarily plow in their draw step or anything. Unless they do something scary here. But 
I think I let them give them the ability to cast Hogak if they want to. And if they just cast the therapy, then I just plow the other Icarid. Did they just take a natural draw? Or are they? No, they're still deciding on whether they want to dredge or not, I think. They just, all right, they took a natural draw step. Cool. Yeah, this is fine. Just cast the Hogak. Pay no attention to the source of plow shares. That's definitely in my hand. That you literally know about. They, so they took a natural draw step, which means we can't get Hogak next turn, at least. So we have more time to find something. Rest in peace, Path to Exile, Source of Plowshares. Stoneforge Mystic. Caracas, yeah. We have a lot of good draws. Hey, look at that. Let's not play it. For the B, uh, we pr eh, no, I want to incentivize them to like waste a turn casting Hogak for no reason once they get there. It's not like they can discard it. Now all they have is one Narc and three Icarids left as actual cards, and we can block one of them forever. In before funeral time, we saw their whole deck. You gotta dread, yeah. You gotta dredge to kill me. At this, at this stage. No Icarids is also good because they might just like deck themselves. <laughs> they can't find Icarids. You got me. I'll block. <laughs> so now we can just surgical all their Icarids, and they literally can't kill me with a Narcomuba before they deck. They also can't cast the Hogak anymore. So. Do I surgical it now? I guess I actually thin their deck out, too. I could thin their deck to, like, eight cards. They just, like, lose. I should probably just surgical it now. We, we had a lot of good draws. I guess I should have attacked because I'm... Yeah, okay, they're dead. We did it. Should have attacked for one because they're not hitting me because we're surgicaling them, but... I was just wondering, like, is there any downside to not doing it then? If they, like, take a natural... So if they, if they bring back the Icarate and then take a natural draw step and then find Cabal Therapy and then cast it and then name Surgical Extraction, I guess we get punished. But even then, like... I guess, yeah, then there are no targets for the Surgical, too. We can't eat the rest of the Icarids. There's, like, no reason not to, because they just can't win once we kill the Icarids. They have one Narc left in the deck, and they'll they'll deck out before they can do anything. Oh, I stole this Graveyard up. What? Skill. I mean, my opponent, I think, played their uh, Dread Return turn extremely poorly. <laughs> I feel like they should have definitely cast Cabal Therapy and then gotten their uh, Bridges Surgical, but then still had like two Narcomibas in play to do stuff later. At least like be relevant rather than just like wasting their entire board state to try to like make an infinite amount of like a jillion zombies.
Sand's a little mopey. Snowboard's Crusader's strong. I think the Sand's borderline. I think I'll keep it. We're on the draw. We want, like, Vile and Thalia. I don't think the Sand's bad enough that I want to mull it. Definitely not, like, super strong, though. Yeah, we might have been at 8 instead of 16. <laughs> I mean, if we had never drawn, like, a flyer to block them, we might have been dead. Eventually. But we would have had, like, 9 million turns to draw something. Okay. What is this? Depths? Hand sucks on the draw. I mean, kind of just sucks. In general. Did I go Wasteland this Bayou? There aren't a lot of Verdant Catacombs Bayou Thoughtseize decks. Besides depths, right? That wasn't good. Taking a Revoker is a strong indication that my opponent is not planning on playing a fair game of Magic the Gathering. <laughs> Taking a Revoker over Stoneforge and Mirren Crusader <laughs> is a strong tell. Uh, do I... There's like... They like Mox... Hex Mage Depths. Mega 2020 gets me. Do I lead with this Wasteland? Probably. It's like no reason not to. If I draw exactly Tomic. Like they already know about it. There's no, no point in like hiding it. I don't think Wasteland in the Bayou is good though. Could just snap off the Wasteland greedy. Yeah, I don't like just snapping off Wasteland, especially against Depths. You can play turn, Tome turn two if you draw him. I mean, I might if it's depths. Tome it's really strong, right? And it's not like I can protect it with a mother of runes or something. All right, officially depths. All right. Now maybe oh no, they have crop rotation up. Fuck. All right, yeah, we probably don't wasteland here, right? If I just get crop rotated, I'm just like a fool. I just let this needle resolve and then uh, get stoneforge and stuff going. I don't think wastelanding into crop rotation is worth it. You can't waste. Well, I mean, I could with the pivot needle on the stack, right? Then I get crop rotated and just get absolutely bodied. Fair respect, crop. Yeah. I think it's worth it because I need to cast my spells. Crusaders back in the deck. I've been trying it out. It has done very little so far. It did dunk on dredge last round, but I think it could have been almost anything. My lad would have been so good. Clear punt. Batter Skull doesn't combo with Crusader. GT does. Also, kills like bobs and shit. The needle indicates that they're turbo depths though, right? Not slow. Does slow depths play needle main? Next, we're tapping out these next couple of turns like Quakers. I think I want to get an equipment, like an actual equipment equipment, because I think I want to like try to cast Crusader or at least Prelate next turn. And then turn four I can like play and equip a thing. So I think it's going to be GTA then. They can't 2020 me unless they have Mox Diamond, right? Or Spear Guy if they're like Turbo. Yeah, they have the crop rotation. I mean, it was like pretty heavily telegraphed. Urborg. So this Hex Mage Dark Depths? Oh no, this, this works too. Yeah, never mind. This works. We're dead, right? Yeah, we're dead. Make it 2020. I have nothing to do about it. So I'll play landed pass and hope they don't go for it for some reason. They know... They don't know two cards in my hand, but there's like no reason to not go for it here. Like, the, like you don't you don't gain things by waiting versus death and taxes. 
one of the best ways to, to beat death taxes is try to kill them before they find their stuff. We are definitely dead. Sideboard time. Pretty easy eight cards. Cut all the bad shit. Cut two more cards. Cut like a stone forge and Prolet's okay. Prolet on two can stop a lot of their stupid stuff, right? Like, abrupt decays and whatever. I take Jailer out. Jailer, yeah, Jailer, I mean, Jailer can kill apparently. Jailer's definitely worse against, like, turbo depths versus slow depths. Because you don't really need to... It's mostly just, like, staying afloat for, like, turns one through three. For, uh, turbo depths. Whereas slow depths, sometimes you do need to, like, grind with random shit. You can also just cut Mirror Mir 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 slams the door really fast, especially with, like, GTA. And it does have, like, pro their whole deck. I don't love Prelate. Yeah, Prelate is, like, definitely medium-ish. They don't... There's no, like, good number to put it on. You can put it on, like, one to play around Crop Rots and Thought Seasons and stuff, but then you turn off all your plows. You can put it on two, which is probably, like, the best number. Turns off their... Mostly to turn off their abrupt decays and stuff. Probably Prelate, though. Yeah, Prelate on two has its uses, but I think the rest of the deck also has its uses. Yeah, it turns out Scrying. Rites of, Rites of Consumption is notable. What's your question, Aisha 9? Something like this. Sand's probably pretty good, right? Crocus Wasteland Port, and we, like, have this vial going. <laughs> it's probably good enough. The Batter Skull's mopey, but, like, this is still strong. Do people add peas to Carbonara because that's a book? Well, I don't know. This Aether Vial gets like abrupt decay. It's a little awkward. I'm just gonna port Vial here. Waiting for my opponent. What you got? Uh, okay. <laughs> Nothing else. Do I have any Italian magic friends? Uh, I don't think so. So we could play the Caracas here to try to lead into possibly casting Council's Judgment, but the Caracas also like shows them that I have Caracas. We could play Wasteland. We can't really port anything is the issue. At, yeah, go ahead. Go at Andrea Mangucci. And ask him ask him if he has peas in his Carbonara. It's really a toss-up which land I want to play here. It's really awkward. It'd just be Caracas. Council Judgment's kind of important to be able to cast in future turns if they have a, a thing that I need to kill. Also, if they want to like try to needle Caracas, we still have this Wasteland and stuff. Although that goes the same for the Wasteland. 
I'd rather be using my Krakus for white mana. Doing something. I guess I can deport them now. Are they gonna like decay my Aether Isle or something? With the Lotus Petal? Seems kind of loose in the face of this Rashad and Port. Kind of a, a weird fetch. Rotate. Are they gonna like just fucking go off and like rights me or something? I mean, Krakus wouldn't have saved me from that. This seems ambitious. Do they have like not of this world maybe? What's happening? Should I be concerned? Plague Engineer. Okay, yeah, that's not scary. That's not scary at all. <laughs> sure. Like, if I draw a white source, I don't even know that I would cancel this judgment to it. Yeah. They have two cards in hand. Can we wasteland this Urborian good conscience? They have two cards in hand and have used a crop rotation. Can I just wasteland this Urborg and port the nurturing peatland? <sighs> I mean, I guess I'm like wastelanding the lotus petal at worst, right? Yeah, I'm on board wastelanding here. I don't want to almost. I kind of want to waste land the peatland actually import the Urborg, but Urborg is like a pretty good land for them. Want to waste peatland? Yeah, it's the possibility. It's also worse if they have a second Urborg, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, but they probably wouldn't have crop rotted if they had a second Urborg. Uh, Akaleth, thanks for the Twitch Prime sub. Appreciate it. And Aisha9, thanks for the 10-month resubscription. Appreciate that as well. Thank you for your support, both of you. So yeah, I think we're just going to like take this out before and jail this Plague Engineer, if nothing else. We have Caracas and Path and a bunch of other shit going on. Is human even the best name? Like, I boarded all my Thalias. I guess it hits, like, Recruiter and Mock. Eh, that's kind of rude. Can't do anything about it. Probably take the Jailer here, right? Taking the Path here feels extremely greedy. Just because the other two aren't, aren't currently castable. We definitely would just take the Valve to four and Jailer this Plague Engineer, so. It's gotta be the Jailer, right? They'd be pretty happy if I pathed, especially this Plague Engineer, because they'd, like, they'd at least have lands. Interesting. All right, well. Whatever you say, boss. Oh, man, we can't play this Mother of Runes until next turn. Super punished. You got me. I like that we drew another planes as well. Palace Jailer, the old plague engineer. Ban Urborg. 
I hate clicking on my lands twice. Flick Wisp is pretty good. Flick Wisp our Jailer to eat more things. We also have Council's Judgment at the ready. Okay, they seem pretty dead. Ban or Borg because it's obnoxious as the real MTGO Insider. Yeah, seriously. Ban or Borg because I hate playing against it on Moto. <laughs> Um, that seems fine. Did pretty well that game. Opponent had a kind of a clunker hand. Plugin here is just not threatening out of Turbo Depths. Am I wrong in that assessment? Like this, this matchup isn't about value. Like I don't care if I get two for one or something with a Plague Engineer. Like the only thing that I can see Plague Engineer being useful for is like on Elemental, so I can't block it with Flyer. Like I can't block a a. Uh, Mirror Lage with Flyers, but even then, like, Flicker Wisp can still flicker the Mirror Lage or something. No, like, I cut all my Thalias. Yeah, Plague Engineer does not seem super threatening. Was definitely more scared of them just, like, casting a, uh, like, a Liliana there. I mean, I guess not necessarily because I had a Council's Judgment in my hand, but. Uh, yeah, that seems fine. Clean your sucks, no one should play it. I mean, specifically in Turbo Depths, right? Alright, we want this hand to prevent me from dying on the first couple of turns of the game. That's when Turbo Depths really gets you. I don't think this hand is good enough. I don't think, like, port on the draw with like some vials I don't think this hand's strong enough I think I want some earlier interaction with that and my opponent can just kill me with like turn 2 Merit Lage or as it sits like I can't beat turn 3 Merit Lage <laughs> like I could I can't even like recruit a Tomic or something because you can't recruit Tomic to have Violet in or anything like that I think I'd be much happier with like a six than this this hand. This hand feels like a trap. Alright, this hand seems good enough. Uh I guess we put the second surgical on bottom. Like they could thought seize the surgical, but I mean we we have plow and Karakas to answer Merit Lady. We just kinda want Surgical's only really useful for like sniping all their dark depths, right? I meant, like, the play Yeah, yeah, I, I knew that. I was just talking to referencing that the hand I think was also, like, a trap, because it looked fine, but wasn't. But yes, I also do think that play here seems like a trap against DNT. As turbo depths. Anyway, goodbye. Other surgical. Being bottom planes? Eh, that's also reasonable. Thoughts is the plow maybe the surgical the wisp all right hey look at that i swear to god thought is just vampiric tier for your opponent be in for surgical and thought on turn one seems like a little insane i don't even know if i want like if i could have vampiric tutor i definitely wouldn't have drawn flicker wisp there though but like just always puts whatever card you take or want to take on the top. Oh, the second. oh yeah, yeah. Definitely not the only one, but I guess that kind of tracks. Another Thoughtseize? A needle. Needle on Caracas? Or they just like name wasteland anyway. Yeah, that's reasonable. Oh no, we could have surgical it and got the surgical on dark depths. Dang, they got me good. They future sniped me. They have to name waste because otherwise they lose on the spot. Yeah, they would have lost on the spot. You still, yeah, we do that on turn four with like flicker waste and wasteland and surgical. I think I'm gonna play on this Krakus just for like extra safety. 
they already know about it, so. Not another thought, Seize. No! My plan, my precious plan. <laughs> Future sniped, yeah. Opponent, obviously a time traveler. Knew I was gonna draw Wasteland. No, my plow? Hey, that's a pretty good draw. All right, we're all set up for my my plan next turn. Just don't thought seize me again. Turn four is a go. The only way you thought thought seize plow there is if you like have a third thought seize, right? You take this wisp. Oh baby, let's go. It's time to get him. is just absolutely nothing threatening now. Screenshot just in case. All the dark depths are there. All right, we good. They have hex mages, plague engineers, and sylvan safekeepers. Oh, they have two trackers to kill me with as well. Those are the only things. No Lily. Yeah, they don't have any Lilianas. Plague Engineer, Safekeeper, Tracker, Hex Mage. And Bobs. Their crop rotation doesn't even do anything now. Because they have the step in play. <laughs> they can't even like protect a tracker from a, a path. Still no black mana. Or still no green mana. Alright, let's go, Flicker Wisp. Time for the beatdowns. They draw a plague engineer, they can two for one me. Their crop rots give them a clue. I mean, not with this hand, they don't. <laughs> More black sources. <laughs> Just no green mana. Nice, nice deck opponent. But yeah, their hand is crop rotation, crop rotation, safety for trophy. So yeah, we can just play this jailer. Yeah, even the planes. God damn it! Fuck Urborg. You find a green source yet, opponent? Oh, they found a green source, technically. <laughs> oh, they can crop. Oh, they use the pedal to crop rotate for a green source. Genius. They have basic forest in here? Yeah, they have one. They should probably crop or date for basic forest. So they can cast their spells. <laughs> oh, Bayou. Oh, I guess they are, didn't have me on Wasteland again. Now they can't EE on three. If only we knew their entire deck. They can still find one of their other three Lotus Petals to play the EE that's not in their deck on three. This is just safekeeper, right? Is it gonna trophy something? Right. Oh nope, they're rotating again, sure. Cross these things off of the list here. Because need a lot of ways that was so reliable before. Now they're gonna trophy. Alright, I'll go get a planes, I guess. And punch them. Hey, a mom. It's pretty good. Punch. That's pretty good. Kills their uh, Sylvan Safekeeper. So I don't have to defend Monarchy. Hello, kitty. Sylvan Scrying. Oh, busted. 
Can I even find anything that matters? Like Ghost Quarter? Nurturing Peatland? Caracas? There are a lot of uh, good choices with this scrying. They don't have like a Dryad Arbor yet. <laughs> this is the saddest Sylvan scrying I've ever seen. <laughs> Like, four mana, and your land drop, draw a card. <laughs> hey, we found our surgical again. Should I just, like, sur I could surgical these tro There's, like, one other trophy in the deck. Yeah, we're just gonna, like, capital them in safety for a second attack. Oh, man, I can surgical with black mana. Broken. Oh, hello. Yes, my surgical was very good there. <laughs> last last match against Dredge. Be sporting and pay the life. I'm not even surgical anything here, am I? None of their cards are scary. I guess I could surgical their thought seasons, right? Is there anything I could have done differently? I think I would have cast the um Cabal Therapy first. It's like way worse it's like way better if you get if I have surgical extraction. That's what I was expecting to happen. You had a Cabal Therapy in the yard, I believe. Yeah, that's a punch. Yeah, you know what? Let's surgical. Their thought seizes. To protect my hand. You know what? We'll pay we'll pay a black mana. Other hand is a hex mage. Cool. Their thought seizes won't turn off the clock. Uh, I guess they are five. Uh, I mean, Surgical's, like, pretty common tech in d &T now these days. Like, and you were, like, murdering me if I had just, like, a bunch of slow hate, right? Like, the only cards you're dying there to are, like, something like Surgical or Macabre. So it's, like, just name the card that you lose to and then make a million zombies, right? That's generally the, the dredge plan. I also did keep pausing a lot. How do you feel about Brightling at the moment? Eh, I'm not a huge fan. I don't like Brightling a lot, because, like, Grixis is the big deck to beat right now. Like, it's not very good against Baleful Strix. Uh, I guess I should just cast this Batter Squall on I didn't even realize this was in my hand. And, like, you can still Dread Return if you, like, Therapy and Miss, right? If you Therapy and I don't have anything, you're still getting Zombies, and then you can cast the Dread Return and just, like, make a gigantic uh, Thug or something. Or, not Thug, tra Grave Troll or something. Assuming I have nothing, you can just, like, Therapy me, Therapy me, get a bunch of Zombies anyway, and then, like, sack three of them to Dread Return something. And then, like, also you hit with a second Therapy because, um, because you see my hand after the first one. That was the only big thing, I think, that I recall. I was definitely surgical the bridges regardless, though, so you would have liked to have had two Narc Amoebas in play, which probably, I mean, obviously, having two Narc Amoebas in play is better than having zero Narc Amoebas in play. But I guess you still also would have had access to the Dread Return, so, like, maybe that would have been relevant. Because you could have, like... Um... Because the Dread Return is still there after the Surgical, so at some point you could have therapied away the Swords of Plowshares and, like, Dread Return to big uh, Grave Troll, but Grave Troll gets blocked by Mom, so. Not super clear, but obviously a better position. Do you mind? Do you mind, Kitty? Huh? Alright. Turbo Depths. I was actually in three. I lost game one. Yep, no problem. Hello, 
KD. Man, this hand sucks. Man, this hand is okay. Uh, I don't like any of these. I guess ship second plow. Like this hand's pretty well stacked as like plow, stoneforge, tomek against something like Delver. And if plow's bad, I don't want two of them. Nettle Sentinel, thanks for the follow. As much as, <laughs> as much as uh, your name irks me as a Death and Taxes player, shakes me to my very core. But I appreciate the support. Ooh, what do we got here? Rug Delver. Do you mind? Do you mind, Kitty? Can you be more comfortable, please? Drop Ponder, huh? Drop Ponder Shuffle. Oh, God. Guys, Wasteland? No Wasteland? I think it's a yes Wasteland time. Wasteland is a go. Ponder Shuffle off Trop. Just gotta do it. Just gotta do it to him. This never works. <laughs> this never works for me. They always have the other land. Damn it. I do upkeep to run this stifle is bad. Wow, the disrespect. I played DNT currently. I haven't played Nettle since In that case, I respect you all the more, Nettle Sentinel. You, you go. Oh, they pondered and didn't shuffle too? Wow, rude. That means they have another land. I can't beat more land. What if they just like play a Renin 6? I can't beat that. No, play a Tarmogoyf. Cast a Tarmogoyf. Wait, oh. Huh. Oh, this is just Ren. Yeah, we're fucked. This is just four color. Tomek can maybe beat Ren. Probably not when they have five other cards in hand. <laughs> but we're sure as shit gonna try. Like drawing the third source of plowshares is also horrendously bad against the deck. Like no reason, no notable creatures. Go Tomic. What are the odds that my opponent can kill a Tomic? Like ninety percent, one hundred percent. Ah, okay. I'm just gonna force it. Well, we tried our best. I believe this is what they call dead. <laughs> Narset finds Jace. All right. Ah, perfect. The perfect answer to to my opponent's three planeswalkers: a single Phyrexia Evoker. <laughs> what could go wrong? As text, I mean, it forces my opponent to like unsummon the revoker to keep taking up a Ren if they don't have any kill spells in hand. Ah, uh, cool. Now they have a force of will too, just in case. Maybe they lack a land. <laughs> that's a that's a good that's a good joke. Oh fuck! They're on. They're on Strifeful pile. Ah, oh, Jesus! All right. Well, game match four, guys. Match four, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> oh no! Don't have six. Oh, I can play this. So I cast the sword, they just force it. Scoop. I mean, not unreasonable. I, actually, we just can't beat this Ren ulting, right? This Ren's just gonna ult next turn, too. They just force it anyway. Alright, yeah, we're, we're dead. 
They're on a strifo pile? Well, we're... We are right fucked. DNT is fine, but well, we're five o five on Monday, and we've killed our pre other two opponents. So you know, turns out having bad matchups is something that exists. This seems like a reasonable sideboard option. What are you doing? Why are you just like pressing your head into my face, cat? All these revokers. I'm probably gonna cut all these plows, and my opponent's just like not going to have cut all their tarmogoyfs for some reason. And that's just gonna be miserable. Run the place, so like mom's still fine. God, Crusader actually like sucks a lot in this matchup too, because they just have like punishing fires too, so they just have infinite lightning bolts for it. Prelate's probably necessary, but very weak. You probably should have, like, a Flicker Wisp. The DNT being bad, thanks to me. I've been enjoying killing all the... Yeah, I I've been enjoying murdering a bunch of Delver, too, but, like, everyone seems to think DNT is totally unplayable. But I've been killing it. Well, let's cut here. You like shave a Thalia? Eh, Thalia is really strong, especially on the play. Maybe this matchup is I'm supposed to shave a land. It's like shaving land feels really bad when my plan has three cataclysms. Just cut like another wisp. We have both of our anti Grixis cards, right? Crusader is phenomenally weaker in this matchup, though, than in uh, traditional four color control. Yeah, I'm, ha I'm fine with less people playing it. Just means that people respect DNT less, and that's when DNT is at its best, right? When people just, like, stop playing stuff. Cyrus was telling me that, like, ant players are talking about cutting the massacre. It's like, yes, please. What are you doing? What are you doing, Kitty? Oh, well, I guess I know what two drop on casting. That seems kind of weird, though, unless their hand is, like, extremely mana light. Taking... The Thalia there. Punishing yeah, Punishing Bile is certainly a nightmare. This is definitely, like, one of your worst matchups in all of Legacy. This is one of my least favorite to queue into. No consideration, just port that turn. This is a possibility, but I don't think so. I don't think I'm winning that, like, I think it's, like, kind of greedy, right? Like, I've only just had seven cards. Like, I have no reason to believe that my opponent's not going to hit another land drop. And if they do, then, like, my port does effectively nothing. What am I doing the following turn? Porting again? Because I don't have a one drop to play. I'm gonna cast this Crusader and it's gonna fucking die a horrible death. But if it doesn't, I just get to murder their face. Consider it porting for info. But it also ports like waste time, right? I don't develop anything. The curve of Stoneforge, like Crusader or Sword of Fire and Ice, is extremely threatening. It does demand some sort of answer. If the info is, oh, they have more land drops, then I just like time walked myself, right? No for Sereno. Just tap out for something. I definitely don't have a fourth land in hand. Wow. <laughs> Not suspicious at all. <laughs> Opponent doesn't have three mana, no plays, huh? Couldn't possibly have a certain command of some sort. 
possibly from a black red dragon of, of some kind. I think this turn we might port and hold up two mana to activate Stoneforge. The alternative line is just cast Spirit Keeper and just like keep hammering to the board as fast and as hard as possible. But I think forcing them to like keep playing around the Sword of Fire next is pretty nice. I think it was just like punishing Fire Man Crusader, in which case. Eh. Equipping it was obviously really bad there, too. If this is the case, we might actually cast Spirit Keeper now. If they're not just like leaving up mana here. Probably holding up Exclude. Stoneforge. Eh, I don't like that. Oof. They do have a force. That sucks. Spirit Keeper for three creatures is pretty strong. I would have been happy with it. Especially with, like, equipment. Like, it's not super safe in my hand. My opponent knows about it and can find a Snapcaster who just thought sees it. I think just trying to slam it's a, a fine option. What are we getting got by now? Snap thought sees. Cataclysm time? Oh, it's not a Cataclysm. I guess I should stop playing lands. I shouldn't have played that fifth land. What cards am I scared of? Like none of them really. Ren in the six, but I can't really port them off of that. Like double black, I guess, is the only double color they need besides blue, so I guess I port this. in their deck. Why wouldn't they? They can't fetch by off turns of putting green can I just keep them off that. I guess that does track, right? What earth is this? What? What? Why would you port in Notion Thief first at the time? What the actual fuck opponent? Sure. All right. Why? Just that seems terrible. An ultimate tech to beat Palace Jailer. These draws have uh, not been good. I, I will say. Some strife on board and thief against me. How is thief correct? How many bad cards are in your deck? They're like Tarmogoyfs, and then maybe some like extraneous, like random, like one ofs. And how many cards are you boarding in? Like, it's good against exactly Palace Jailer, right? And like, absolutely nothing else. Still questioning the, the leaving of Tarmogoyf. Good with Dak. Like, you're already losing to the Dak. Like, you don't need to Dak Mind Rot your opponent. Hey, we are not dead, currently dead anymore. It's also good, yeah, it's not very good against Sword of Fire and Ice. <laughs> we are exactly alive. And then we'll just top deck Palace Jailer next turn, and then kill the Baleful Strix and block the Snapcaster Mage, and my opponent will have nothing. 
and everything will be fine. And then the turn after that, we'll top that Cataclysm. Please try Recruiter or Wisp. Well, I guess Wisp also does it, yeah. But I'm just gonna, like, cook cake and me or something. Uh, TMS, that's pretty good. There's no way my opponent has a single removal spell, right? I guess Flicker Wisp would be able to beat a removal spell. Prelate, huh? I'm not gonna do it, friendo. Hey, we tried. We tried our best. No. Yeah, we're done. We tried. Strife of Pile remains very bad matchup. I'm proving a point. I gotta find a Strifo Pile list. The, I gotta find a Strifo Pile list that's playing Tarmogoyf in it. Alright, here we go. We found a list. Does this one have a Notion Thief in the sideboard? It does. All right, cool. All right, we're going to find out how how best to sideboard here. All right. How many of your cards aren't good in this matchup? Um, so your Tarmogoyfs, I actively think, are maybe the worst card in your deck in the Death and Taxes matchup. These are all great. These are great. Um, I put it a Narcissus. They're not playing exactly this list, but... For, for argument's sake. Uh, you could argue that, like, the Inquisition isn't great because it doesn't hit Cataclysm, right? Which is, like, one of the only cards that matters, especially post-board. Even though, even, you could even argue, like, the Spell Snare, but Spell Snare is still even okay. But, like, I think the rest of these cards are insane, right? For, you keep it all your Force of Wills because the only card you lose to is Cataclysm. Why is Jarmo so bad? Just respect her. But it just doesn't do anything. Like, you don't need to close the door as uh, Grixis Control versus Death and Taxes. It, it's a creature that doesn't do anything when, like, you need... Cause you're just, like, playing the, the very long control game and just, like, a big, dumb threat, right? It's the same reason that Gurmog Angler is bad in traditional Grixis control is that you don't need to close that door because the door will just close because you'll grind them into the ground and it doesn't forward any of your, like, game plans. And then for, to sideboard, you'd bring in the, uh, the Deluge, the Pernicious Deed... The K command, the trophies, like maybe this two to the slaughter. This two to the slaughter seems like it sucks though. Unless you like saw a Gideon or a Karn, then maybe, but. Why is the deck capable of casting Leobold and Narset playing Notion? Also, yeah, they <laughs> just like cast a Narset. Probably a Leobold. But yeah, I, don't, I don't know. But they're already boarding in like, what, five cards, right? What? Two the, or Toxic Gailers, Deed, K command, two trophies, maybe six cards or two to the slaughter. Like you're, so you cut three Tarmogoyfs, which they didn't even, and like cut this Inquisition, and let's say cut this Spell Snare? That's already five cards. Like, how are you fitting this Notion Thief into your deck? It's absolutely insane to me. Alright, end rant. Continue playing Magic. I disagree heavily that the Notion Thief should be boarded against Death and Taxes, if we're looking at like that list or something. And I would be shocked if they had enough bad cards in their main deck and not enough good cards to sideboard in that they uh, brought in a Notion Thief over, like, a bad card. So. 
I'm gonna draw. This hand's a little weak. I think it's good enough to keep, but I'm not super pleased about it. Hey, opponent is a fan of the stream. I'll keep this, I'm not like super thrilled about it. They have to like rend me. Be kinda sad. Play, okay, I'm not around at least. Thought saves. Hmm, can't do anything about it. So I don't know what we're playing against. Could be like basically any of the UC decks. Delver versus Control or Storm, really, right now. Does not change my play pattern of Land Go. This thought sees hits the recruiter, it's probably Storm, right? Because none of these other cards matter. If it's Delver, I could see most of the cards be like any of these cards being taken. If it's con Grixis Control, it's probably the Spirit Keeper. This is probably Grixis Control. Or like four color or something. That'd be my best guess, at least. Ooh, Snowforge. I think it's a better play than Tomic here, regardless. Kind of hedges my bets too. We'll just Stoneforge for um, sort of Fire Nice, probably. Hedges my bets against the field. Unless Thought Season, the Spirit Keeper was like a sick bluff and they're on Storm. They just didn't want me to port this turn. That does seem kind of insane. Since this recruiter is currently the only way I would ever beat Storm with this hand. <sighs> the next turn. Because it depends on what my opponent does. I still don't know what they're on. Conf I, don't, I don't have any confirmation of what they're doing here. So you have to be wary. I think Tomic's probably the safer line. Or playing Tomic or a Recruiter. I think it's better than just like getting the sword into play and then possibly having my Snowhorse just eat it. Alright, what do we got? What are we playing against? All right, so not four color Delver, probably four color control. All right. Oh God, this is just fucking Strifo pile a second time. God damn it. Uh, some some bad luck. Not even just like normal four color control either. <laughs> just the punishing fire deck feed inversion both times. Just mono unbeatable cards. If I cast Sword here, I can, like, Tomic plus Equip. If I cast Rec I could have just Recruit. Our Spirit Keeper's already down for the count. Our P-Fire's... Like, P-Fire makes Crusader bad. I could just Recruit Jailer here. That's probably not unreasonable. Remember when we joked that the matchup was fine since Strife was the only pilot? I mean, I don't think, like, people are playing this in paper. Like, super often at all.
Trifo is like one of two people that has carried the deck to, to results. Yeah, her jailer seems fine. Red and six. Oh, buy back a land. All right. Not killing my recruiters nice, at least. What if I just slam Jailer here? It's kind of scary. Now that they have two mana, though, they can Palace Jailer me. I, or not Palace Jailer. I can Palace Jailer them, but then they can, like, Snapcaster me. I probably just want to... I can, like, Tomic Vile and leave up Plow. And then next turn I can threaten, like, play Equip Sword. Probably the, the safer line. If they have Snapcaster, though, I'm, like, getting eaten by Snap Thoughts. He's pretty bad, but at least then I'll still have, like, Sword of Fire Nice to, to go off with. my sword on. Yeah, but if they have Snapcaster, and, like, they snap Thossies anyway, like, the Jailer's not doing that much better. If they just, like, snap Thossies, Jailer, uh, yeah, ping my Recruiter, and I'm just, like, left with nothing anyway. But I think if they don't have Snapcaster, we just play Jailer next turn with Sword Supplier shares up. God, they just, like, have Hardcast Force of Will. Especially with Ren and Six. Yeah, we just have to wait. We're not, I'm not playing around Hardcast Force at this point. We gotta, we gotta slam cards. Hey. Port main phase, go to second main cast. I don't think that's a winning line, though. We need to get on the board. We only have three cards in hand. The longer we just sit and twiddle our thumbs with this run and six and play, the worse it gets. So they do have a Snapcaster Rage? They do, alright. Hopefully they don't have a second one. Snap Fatal Push. Yep. Kill a Jailer. Hey, Commander back? Okay, I guess. Interesting. Rip. Mildly concerned if their last card here is Cole Guns Command, then we're probably dead. Doesn't look like Cole Guns Command. 
I don't know what this does look like, though. Hello, kitty. I'm trying not to die here. Get out of there. What's happening? Oh, this is cake. Struggling to cast Narset. It's like struggling to choose modes on Colgan's command. They already activated their Ren, so. Well, now they just have snap K command, which is not good for me. So if we kill the Ren, they can just flash the Snapcaster, take the Monarchy from me. But we might be able to just take Monarchy back, right? They only get one draw with it. And if they don't do that, if they just save the Snapcaster, snap K command, like our sword's already getting blown up anyway. I think it might be worth it just to clear this Ren 6 to make my Flicker Wisp better. Dak? What about Dak? We're, like, we're, we can't beat cards that they have. We know they have nothing, right? We know they have, a, like, a Polluted Delta. Yeah, they have a Polluted Delta and a Snapcaster Mage in hand. That's literally it. They have two cards in hand. So their options would be Flash and Snapcaster for no value to take Monarchy from me for a turn and hope to draw an answer to this Mother of Runes. Or... Don't flash in Snapcaster. I get to keep Monarchy. They Snapcaster to Colgan Span, kill the thing, make me discard or something. I'll trade Monarch for a turn to... Yeah, exactly. Pretty sure the line is just... Cat Sword Clear Run. Unfortunately, we can't hit my opponent's face because then the Ren sticks around. I'm pretty sure I need to take this Ren off the board. Why do you do this, cat? Get off me, punk. I was saying Dak when they were fumbling to cascade him. Oh, okay. Here our card. Cinderella's nice. Okay, so they're going to, yeah, they're intending on shattering my sort of fire and ice here and making me discard. I'd probably discard the Flicker Wisp here. Hitting up player's trigger should be eroded to trigger off of walkers. I mean, yeah, probably. That's probably like current card design, right? Because they're printing a bunch of anti-walker stuff after uh, releasing war. You were just so inconvenient, Kitty, huh? You want to just, like, lay in a more comfortable position, please? You're not a scarf. Ooh, now we just got this wasteland. We have one, two, three. We have six mana, so we could actually... Oh, well, we're not. We're going to just cut this wasteland. We cast Prelate. Force my opponent to uh, kick man me in response here. And then we discard the Wasteland. And we keep the Wisp. It's probably fine. And then after they kick man, we probably put the... What did they do off the Ponder? They didn't shuffle off the Ponder, which is threatening. Probably want to put the Prelate on like two, right? Because they can't be Punishing Fires. I think I have to assume they're playing well. This doesn't let me cast the Flicker Wars, but if like, they don't K command me for some reason. Sphinx Cats are all the same. That's true. Sphinx Cats are incredibly cuddly. So 
I think this is probably going on two because if they find a grove, then we're like just so bodied by these P fires. Okay, command shatter the sword, make me discard a card. feels greedy when there are two punching fires sitting in my opponent's yard. My plan for trying to win this matchup is definitely grinding them down with uh, this monarchy. Um, they have plenty of all their mana. Turn out P5 Ren 6 and like decays or whatever if they have them. Ugh, that sucks. We have Flicker Wisp at least. Try to stop this bird from killing me. God, how scared am I of this attack? How threatened am I? How how cowardly am I? Am I supposed to use use and activate this mother of runes? There's no way. This attack seems so incredibly threatening. I mean, I guess it's, it's not free on their side, because if, if this is a bluff, we just eat it. Not taking the bluff would be just trading. Coward. I mean, it's, it's a legitimate thing to think about, right? I don't think I can afford to just trade, though. Exactly, this isn't coward for me. I'm just trying to think of what the actual good play is. If they have a removal spell, they kill the mom, and then we have mom flicker wisp follow up, and then they can find a removal spell to kill the wisp, but they're just top decking. Yeah, I mean, we're not trading problem. We're trading the mom, if anything. We're not losing mom. We're blocking. Like, I am blocking. I'm 100% going to block the Snapcaster Mage. <laughs> it's a matter of whether or not I'm activating Mother of Runes or not. I think I am activating Mother of Runes. Gut shot, yeah, what a mistake. Pro blue. Wow. The ballsy block, or they drew another K command. Ooh, Crusader. We need to play Wisp this turn, though. We'll just Wisp plus Mom here. Can't really Wisp anything of value, so. What is not activating help? It's, I guess it's not that much better. Get off me, Jake, get out here. Yeah, it's not that much better if uh, they have a removal spell, right? Because then they can just still kill the prelate, even if we just trade. I was just thinking about making the flickers more vulnerable if we like keep the mom around. I swear to God, this cat! If this cat locked herself in the room again. Mothers of Runes. That deck felt really weird if they had nothing. If they have Cake Man, I'm gonna be very sad. Yeah, I think block activating is like 100% the play. 
Hey, this prelate needs to be alive for the rest of this game or we will die now. I think I'm just playing all these moms. My opponent is a plague engineer and we're like already pretty boned. I just need to get my opponent dead. Buyback punishing fires. My prelate dies, we're dead. Hey! You're like, you can't even lock yourself in here. Get out! Get out! You punk. Stop messing with the doorstop. This is a time intensive matchup. This cat. You can also be buying back uh, P fires for like Dak Fadens and stuff too, so not like 100% unreasonable. Seems like Dak. Oh, yeah, we're brainstorms. Dak Faden time. At least we don't have an artifact in play. And if we can just clear the deck with the Crusader. But they do get to just, uh, and just like divination here. And then brainstorm. Things are not looking good for our hero. Oh, I forgot to pour it. Whoops. Grove to save my save myself on sanity. Yeah. I should have ported the grove and upkeep. That would have been the best play, right? Because then they wouldn't have discarded these groves and just been able to buy them back this following turn. I have to play around a lot less cards if they just spend their turn buying back two groves this turn, so. Might as well. Yeah, we're bold of you to assume yourself the hero. It's my stream. I'm always the hero. That's how the stream works. At what point do I start attacking with this prelate? We have three moms? Probably like this turn. They want to block the, the strikes. Oh, we drew another wisp. That's nice. <laughs> I like Ludonil's response. Alright, let's go to combat. Tech. Dak. Tech their face. I don't think I can afford to attack with the Flicker Wisp this turn. If they have like a Force of Wolfmire and their Flicker Wisp, we get ungodly punished. We'll attack their face here, though. Like that. I'll just Wisp my Wisp. Or something like that. They're interested in this trade. Trade mom activation for Baleful Strikes. I'm down for that. Like, they already have a Snapcaster Mage to buy back if they had a K command. I swear to God, this cat. Time for your shenanigans, cat. What on earth even is this? You can't cast Punishing Fire, opponent. I have a Sanctum Prelate in play, yes. Let's do the Flicker Wisp dance.
tap the port or tap the grove like a good player this time. Continue praying to God my opponent never finds uh, a plague engineer or a toxic deluge. So I cannot beat either of those cards. What is my take? More Dax. What's my take on DNT's position in the current meta? I think everyone's crazy and DNT's fine. I think DNT is definitely um, more poorly positioned if these four color control decks start gaining a bunch of popularity and nothing rises up to fight them back. I think we're already seeing like with the back like with the red prison mirror in the final of the last challenge and stuff. I think there are already there are decks that can that can uh, brawl with these like four color uh, creature murdering piles. And I think if, if Delver were if Delver, when Delver were the top deck, DNT was still great. I think it's definitely gotten worse when uh, these these decks came back into the fray. But I think overall DNT is still fine. But the Grixis matchup and the the four what, the four color Renin's the Grixis plus Renin's this matchup is like not obviously not very good. Crusader stares at four turns if they never draw. Yeah, I mean we need, if they they engineered me. Then I assume they would have a removal spell for the prelate after that, because they we lose our mom protection, and well, then once they kill the prelate, we're just dead. But they didn't have it; we did it. Yeah, I think plague engineer is rougher than a uh, Ren six personally, but maybe that's just because. Hey, get out of here! Get out of here, cat! Stop it! I don't know. Plague engineer is definitely a rough card to beat. Ren six feels like weirdly easy. Damn it, this damn cat. Get out of there. I will kick you out of this room. Yeah. Huh. Punk. Yeah, DD definitely. I mean, I'd be much happier if neither of those cards were in the format as a Death of Texas player, but. Uh, anyway, I need a sideboard real quick before I keep talking about. I don't know. Plague, like, main deck Plague Engineer. So, I already don't care. I don't care about Ren and Six in the Delver decks, because I think Delver's still like a great matchup regardless. So, the main matchup I'm concerned about in regards to the, the Ren and Sixes and the Plague Engineers is the Grixis, Grixis Plus decks. Uh, what did I count last time? This? This looks good. Um, anyway. And I think that Plague Azure is way worse for Death Attacks in the Grixis matchups than Ren and Six is. Just because one of your, like, your, some of your best cards are, like, Howl's Beer Keeper, and, like, the ability to, like, cheese game ones by them having, like, no sweepers in the main and stuff. And that that plan has gotten a lot worse since they just get play, to play Plague Engineer. Obviously, your mana down plan gets a lot worse versus Ren and Six as well, which is, like, another way you win these matchups, so it's kind of a... A toss-up, I guess. What's up, Dugs? Yeah. I've been having, like, I've been doing very well in the Ren and Six meta. I think Rix's control remains, like, a horrendous matchup, but... I think for the rest, like, the entire rest of the format, you're still fine against. Like, Delver's a great matchup. The decks that are trying to beat, like, these four-colored greed piles are all great matchups. Like, Turbo Depths, uh, Red Prison, and stuff like that. Uh, what did we play against? We played against... What did we play against at the very beginning? I already forgot our, like... It was something, then Turbo Depths. Oh, Dredge, Turbo Depths, and then uh, Strifo Pile, Strifo Pile. All right, so this hand is planned. The plan of this hand is don't get thought seized, and my opponent doesn't enforce it. Which one I'm actually supposed to quarter? I think it's the Bayou. Like obviously, I, I could turn them off with like cantrips and stuff, but I don't want to get thought seized. And I don't really want to get Ren Sixed. I wonder if I 
probably leave this vial on one. Assuming my first bomb's gonna die here. Oh, nice. Alright, well, I guess I'll take this vial up then. I was not expecting my mom to live. Don't think I'm playing the second mom, because I think my plan is just cataclysm very quickly. Probably leaving this vial on two, though. Pick it up, keep it in the second mom. I don't think I want the second mom to play, though, is the thing, because our plan is, like, cataclysm. If my opponent exhausts a bunch of resources to try to, like, clear this mom, then I'm fine with that. Like, I don't know if I'm cataclysming on turn four, but I might just based on how badly I'm flooding out here. Just like triple stone rain probably good enough. Oh yeah. But if, I don't know if I want to put upkeep like the second mom in that case either, because like it's really bad against rain six. Probably would have just left the vial on one, considering I'm probably keeping it on two. So my post cataclysm is better. I don't know, just hasn't cast anything. It keeps hitting land drops. I don't think it's time for Cataclysm. Leave this file on two, though. Draw GTA. It's not very good. I wonder if I have a K command to shatter my vial. I wonder if I am supposed to just cash in this Cataclysm here. Just keep port uh, vial mom. If they want to cast Cake Man, they have to like lose three lands. Cat before we get Thoughts used. Yeah, the problem is if we Cataclysm, we don't actually blow up that many of their mana for using lands. They would just like sack a bunch of fetch lands. Which isn't great. I think we're going to wait one more turn. And see if they cast like something. Yeah, Cake Command on file. And then don't thought seize me, please. And then, like, just cast, like, a, a Jace or something stupid, and then don't bring Charm into a Force. That's the life. This looks like Cataclysm. Or not Cataclysm. This looks like K commanding my vial. Yup. There's thought of playing the GJ just because this is probably going to happen. You're asking for a lot of things. I'm mostly just asking to not get thought seized, right? Or forced. Uh, what color do I want to cut them off of? What card am I scared of the most here besides... I can't cut them off of thought seize. Not really scared of another K command. I'm kind of scared of, like... A Renin 6? Would be kind of obnoxious. If they, like, didn't play the land after. It's probably the source. Maybe it's supposed to be like the bayou. Probably doesn't matter too much. Come on, don't thaw me. Yeah, nice. Yeah, I'd, I'd love for them to cast like a, a Narset here, or like a Lily Last Hope. Because him's a card. Like, I don't think they play him in the Strife of Pile decks, right? Seems like way too many cards. It's like, oh, Dak? Oh, yeah, deal. I mean, they could, like, loot into more lands here, but I'm fine with that. I mean, I'm not fine with it. I'd love it if they looted into not more lands, but... Definitely just slamming this cataclysm here. Cast cata, keep port. Play Plains Mom. This card Ponder Leovold, huh? Concerned the last two cards are just fourth blue card, but like don't play around cards you can't beat.
Nice. Land. At least Underground City doesn't cast Renin Six. Yeah, I'm fine with that. You, you can't manage it on me. We've literally drawn nothing but lands all game and this GT. <laughs> Mana denying the person that cast this Cataclysm. A losing proposition. I wonder if it's worth attacking next turn. Come on, shuffle. Don't find lands. Lands are for losers. Come on, no shuffle, man. My kingdom for a waste. Yeah, my kingdom for a wasteland. Ooh, Recruiter's nice. Recruiter lets me get some value engines going. We only have one creature in the yard. I've read this game just <laughs> consisted of me doing nothing for three turns. <laughs> Man, we're gonna get fucking play engineered into next week. Opponent's just gonna have like third lane play engineer easy. We're just gonna die a horrible, horrible death. Uh, I wonder if the answer is still Spirit Keeper or if the answer is like. Stoneforge changes for Engineer. Spirit Keeper is not a horrible option. Wisp isn't horrible. Crusader is not horrible. Crusader plus GTA could get out of hand pretty quickly. And, like, we have the mom to protect it from, like, up E fire until then. I think Spirit Keeper is also an option. I shouldn't, like, waste my time. There's still a game three to be had. Although, I guess there might not be. We might win. Could just prelate on one. Turn off their cantrips and shit. But yeah, I think I think I like Crusader more than Spirit Keeper right now. With the board as it is, I just want to get them dead. And the GTA really assists that plan. I just get like engineered into P Fire and just like die horribly. Anyway, huh? What does that mean? What is the... Th I guess fetch means that they didn't want, like, their ponder cards. But they don't have anything here? If they had, like, P-Fire, Grove, P-Fire? I think it's just Crusader. Just, like, give them the least amount of time possible. We can dirtle around Prelate later if that's the, the line we want to take. Not even worth attacking here. I just want to put this uh, GTA on the Crusader and crush my opponent's skull. This board's pretty good. Means I don't get K commanded, which means that they're just dead. The, the possible K command. They can have like a. No, they can't have a Burp Decay now if they're passing the turn. I thought about pumping for the second hit, yeah. It was probably worth it. We should be good now.
<laughs> Moxall gets more Crusader dick punching. <laughs> take more screenshots. Can I not move? Oh, there we go. I want to take more screenshots of Crusader punching opponents' faces in. Excuse me. We did. We were one on one against Strifopile on the day. Cataclysm is a good magic card, as it turns out. I mean, Crusader was the means to end there. I'm pretty sure we probably would have done similarly had we just grabbed, like, Hallowed Spirit Keeper or something. But yeah, Cataclysm was the real fucked up card in that game, for sure. We drew, like, eight lands. It's like, well, this Cataclysm, this Cataclysm is the only way we win because we're just flooding out like crazy. <laughs> I probably should have pumped in case they had like some like abrupt decay. I also should have ported the uh, the you see not the Volk because of something like abrupt decay. I was thinking of some random shit like ancient grudge, but if they have a second land, they could probably cast the ancient grudge anyway because it has a single colored mana requirement versus abrupt decay is double, so they can't like they just can't cast off a of Volk. It's probably correct to port the you see there. <sighs> are you are you are you satisfied moxel you came in saying you wanted a crusader crusader dick punching and we got two games of it where crusader just absolutely brutalized my opponent Indeed, we have punched a lot of people <laughs> with Crusader. Both times holding GTA too. It wasn't even like with sword or something else. It was just like GTA murder you. Mason Clark. Hey, turn one Revoker or Gita busted, right? Oh, this hand sucks. This hand's better. GP winner Mason Clark. I don't know. Is there a photo name Mason Clark? Wait, what happened to my? Oh shit. Where's my? You guys can't see it, but I can. It's right behind the, the screen. Uh, they keep seven. We're definitely keeping this. Uh, we're on the play? Is it Caracas or Plow or Wisp? It might just be Wisp. Wisp is never super strong in um, like non vile hands. It's obviously like a decent curve with Stoneforge Mystic and stuff, but I think... Mom is to plow is good enough against most of the format. I think I just want my lands. It's a greedy world where I just shift the Caracas, but I like hitting land drops a lot. For the draw, I might have shifted the Caracas. What is 
our opponent doing? What you got, opponent? Our hand is not super powerful, except against like Delver. Well, this is scary. Basic Island Preordain. Generally not good matchups when your hand is Mother of Rune, Stone Forge, uh, Source of Ushers. <laughs> I don't think this uh, Preordain bodes well for me. It bottom bottomed at least. I don't think I know enough to attack with Mom though. It still could be stuff like Miracles. I think I'm going to grab Sword. Sword's like fine against most things, hedge my bets. And it's like still finding us the combo decks that can draw me into relevant cards, etc. etc. Force pitch pierce. And then ponder. Yeah, smells like sneak to me as well. What set is that island from? It's like a Magic Origins promo. Or not Magic Origins, Magic Online promo. Edward P. Beard Jr. Oh, is that APAC? Can you just draw like Sanctum Prelate? Oh no! I have to decide when this revoker goes on! <laughs> uh. <clears throat> Sneak attack? Or like. Narset, or I'd probably Jace over Narset. Sneak attack. Sneak attack's not even like that scary. We have a Krakus. And like we can leave it in our hand, and if they show it to like Grizzlebrand, we can at least name Grizzlebrand with Revoker, right? But I guess we're not leaving it in our hand, right? We're probably casting it because we want a clock. <sighs> I don't think we're beating Miracles. I'm just going to throw it out there. I think this hand is just going to lose to Miracles. Miracles play Spell Pierce, right? That's, that's a, just a card they play sometimes. Especially in like the Million Planeswalker meta, right? Hopefully they Spell Snare us so we don't have to decide. Can't see what's in their yard. Um, Preared in Force Ponder, but like I don't think I'd ever respect High Tide. Just like not nearly common enough. I think it's gonna be s just sneak attack. This smells like a combo deck. This smells of. And like, just naming like a Narset or a Jace is just like much weaker against Miracles. Am I, am I sure enough that they're on sneak to attack with his Mother of Ruins? Probably not. Like I said, I don't think we're beating Miracles. Seeing that could technically play Prismatic Vista. There are only two colors, but it's probably terrible. My name didn't matter. That was kind of my point about uh, the choice between like uh, sneak, sneak and show versus miracles is that the name is phenomenally less important if my opponent is on miracles. Was this just blind? They didn't shuffle on the ponder. And then I played a revoker. Then they drew. No, they put it to the they put it at the bottom. So blind. blind. This was in fact calculated. That's yeah, pretty good. Please no counter. Oh, 
Well, that's less good. Hopefully my opponent just exhausts a bunch of resources into taking my Thali off the board. <laughs> or whatever. We get like back to basics. Mm, that did not seem like the world's best source of plowshares. They got like counter on the way back down. That's what we have the second one. I'd rather like Stoneforge plus Port. Probably not. But unless this was if this resolves, I actually don't know what I want to do. We get Stoneforge and not Port. They just brainstormed though. I probably didn't put Terminus to the top. We could just like let the Thalia die, right? We could just Stoneforge and port the planes. If they kill a Thalia, it's whatever. Just Stoneforge for Sword, port the planes. Their turn last turn, maybe. Uh, I guess that makes sense. Like, they wanted to plow the Thalia in response to the port and then like try to like, brainstorm into casting spells. This window's all fucked up now. I need to fix it after the stream. <laughs> Still have six. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. Kind of just want to jam with the sword. Just hit them for five. If they have a counter for the sword, we just cast the Thalia instead. Punch. I'll play this mom. Want more things in play? What you got? I don't have a Thalia in play. You got seven cards in hand. This game really not going how I expected it to, <laughs> considering my hand on, like, turn three, when I was, like, it was, like, plow, planes, planes, revoker, and I was, like, I'm pretty sure we're just never beating Miracle, and then suddenly we are we're in a pretty good position. Mono fluster storms, yeah, I hope. They can, like, snap plow, but they're forced to, like, plow the mom here, right? Oh, I think they can just force me to equip here, I guess. They definitely will. Well, like, don't even claim the Snapcaster. Eh, maybe I do. Maybe I don't. 
probably just playing Thalia, uh, hoarding and caracasing or something. I don't think this matters a whole lot. I kind of just want to put them to two. And if the, I'm porting this planes. If they have like a plow up, we'll have mom. Yeah, I'll put them to two. Yeah, I don't think the stamp matters either. We can also plow the stamp if we really need to. Yeah, two, two is half of four, in fact. Putting them to two is a lot better if they like somehow terminus me here. That was also true. If they like stabilize, denying them another fet second fetch land. <coughs> <coughs> Pretty relevant. We did it. And we won that game somehow. We have a lot of cards with the Miracles matchup in the three Judgment, three Cataclysm version. Eh, Tomic's oh, Tomic does just like a bad Thalia impression with Caracas, right? Let's figure out what else sucks first. Contenders for the Axe, probably like these three. Might just be a revoker. We're probably not good enough. We have like one if we really want to recruit for it or something, but there's just like so little to name. This is probably okay. Needle over revoker. Needle over the other revoker. Hmm. Could kind of see it. Revoker has power and toughness though, which is like not nothing. Way more likely to stick, but it's also way more likely to just not matter at all, right? Like. I, I don't think revoking, like, Jace the Mind Sculptor and stuff is really super relevant in this matchup. I'd rather just have a, a body. First Revoker can attack my opponent, but the Neil cannot. I don't really want Revoker to, like, name Jace and keep it from activating very often. Like, if I had, like, I might, I could even see cutting, like, the other Revoker if I had, like, another card to bring in, just, like, not having any Revokers in my deck. But I think it's probably better than Spirit Keeper and Relic Warder. Unless we see like a lot of like weird uh, enchantments or artifacts. I don't think Back to Basics is good enough to make the swap. Snap Keep. Need to see Counterbalance for Relic Warder. I, I don't know what self respecting Miracles player is keeping Counterbalance in this matchup. <laughs> Gonna get humility. I mean, it's not like <laughs> Leona Relic War is very good against humility. <laughs> Wait, is no humility? Is humility get rid, get rid of all abilities, right? Yeah, otherwise, the Nightlayer 6, which is wreck, wreck it. I've seen Coast Guard Caramel, it's like goblins. That seems absolutely suicidal. <laughs> I mean, I was just tweeting about how people keep keeping in spell pierces where Delver versus Dozen Taxes, so. I guess you never know. Oh, uh, sometimes I shave a Wasteland in this matchup. I probably should have shaved a Wasteland and just kept in both Revokers. Ah, uh, rude. Eh, we have plenty of lands. Hey, look at that. Skill game. Play this violin we're playing Thalia. Getting like mentored here. That'd be pretty scary. Back to basic. All right, that's not nearly as scary as Mentor. Just put us in a little bit of a bind here, but. We're almost supposed to cast Dolly this turn while well, they're tapped out here. Probably. It's probably. Eh. Sacrifice of Land is a big cost when we have a Cataclysm in our hand. Yeah, it's probably too big. Cataclysm is probably plan A currently. Like Jace me, I get pretty punished. Hmm. 
I don't even know if I uh, put in the Thalia here. Probably not. I might want to just put in like Stoneforge because we get Banner Score or something. And then leave my Vial on two. Really nice if we get a Cataclysm, like draw land, Cataclysm them, and then Vial on Thalia. That's like just absolute gasoline. Just force them to answer my shit. I'm gonna grab Batter School Force and the Plow. Sword of Fire seems really weak when my man is being attacked by Back to Basics as well. I'm gonna Plow on the other hand. Wow, nothing. Alright. Alright, we might be shifting gears into Violin Thali. I put in Batter School. Take Violin up to three, plan. Step and then put in the Thalia. Sure, I even have the second equipment, and it, that's if they don't take this cataclysm that they can't beat. <laughs> They just have to take this Cataclysm, right? And then we just get to put in this Batter Skull. <laughs> Not taking the Cataclysm here seems like exceptionally greedy. But if they do take the Batter Skull, we at least get GTA. Cataclysm is two turns. It's not over two turns. We'd wisp our own wasteland if we draw a white source. It, Miracles isn't going to kill me before I find two or three more mana, though, right? It seems, like, really greedy to not take the card that's just, like, if this resolves, you lose, unless they're sitting on Force of Will, right? Or with the Back to Basics after... Oh, yeah, that's probably a good play, too. Hey, we drew a... Not a white source, though. White source? Dang. Unlucky. Oh, yeah, I guess we gotta play two lands anyway. Kinda just wanna equip the GTA and clear this click. Do I wanna put Prelate on something? We're still like a white source away from casting this Cataclysm, so I don't know if the plan is to flicker this back to V6 yet. We could just like put Prelate on one and then get Terminist. Could Prelate, put Prelate on six to not get Terminist. I think we just leave the Prelate in our hand and if they Miracle Terminus, we just put it in on six, but that's not stopping them having one drops. But oh, we have Flicker Wisp to turn off like a plow. Okay, so I think it just won't do anything. What the fuck? Okay. I guess this is happening. <laughs> That's not a card you see every day. <laughs> not even Null Rod, just actual Stony. Yeah, Prelate. Stoneforge with the Stoneforge. That seems kind of weak. It's like getting equipment doesn't do anything, right? We're pretty tight on mana. Probably want to Prelate on one and just hope to not get Blind Terminist, is the plan. I guess I'll. Do I even gain two life? Yeah, this sorry silence is a dying skull. I yeah, we I guess we do still have skull. I kinda wanna put this prelate into play though. And just not get blind terminist. Yeah, I don't think gain two life is relevant. 
There's a world where we like cast flicker us, flicker the stone in, and like ping a thing away. I like more lands. I guess, eh, probably should gain two life, because I forgot I'm just going to get a million counters, because this GTA is just going to sit on my Thalia. We also, like, at some point flicker the Stony and just pump the Thalia a bunch and murder them. Yeah, if we count it down the line, they probably keep the Stony to turn, keep my Aether Vial turned off. Um, we have 8, 9, 10, 11. We te technically just have lethal right now. So I don't think I want to play the Revoker. We just want to not get Terminist. But also, if they just like have a planes up, I don't want to necessarily flicker with this Stony or anything. Narsa, you're just dead. I guess they can have Force of Will. Supreme Verdict. That's uh, not gonna help. I did do my math right, right? Two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven. Yep. If you don't have force of will, you die. Guess that's why we don't gain two life there. <laughs> Can't force anyone to sell yet, and that's that's also true. We did it! Record that last match here. First time playing as Miracles in the London Mulligan world. Hmm. That went fine. Kind of brutalized Miracles there. First, yeah, I think that is the first time I've ever seen Sony Silence Cast Legacy. I think just everyone plays Nullrod. Like, there's no, there's not huge downside to playing Nullrod, right? Stony gets hit by like Ugin and stuff too. If you like Stony the uh, the post X, they can like six mana or eight mana Ugin it. And sometimes you just have two islands and not the the white source. You are, you are miracles with like nine billion basic islands. That definitely doesn't seem free at, at all, but it's like a fine budget option. You don't want to shell out for a null rod for like very marginal corner cases. Artifact's generally easier to kill than enchantments. Yeah, but like, is anyone bringing in artifact removal that doesn't kill enchantments versus miracles? Like, no one's bringing in ancient grudge right, versus miracles or something, right? Or like, sh uh, smash the smithereens bringing anything it's like disenchants or like council's judgments Let's see i don't see i think stony is strictly worse in because i think the biggest fail case of stony is like getting exiled by six mana ugin but anyway Pretty good day. We 4 one we died to Strifo Pile and beat Strifo Pile, so not bad. We 4 one and beat a bunch of not Delver decks too. Yeah, exactly. Stony Classic and White Man is also a, definitely a, a big deal in the deck that has like seven basic islands or something. Sometimes you don't have the planes. A lot of times you do need to Stony on or Stony or Null Rod on turn two against like the, the post decks and such. Yeah, what's the E price of Null Rod? I guess that's yeah, it's just nothing. I, I yeah, I don't I don't think Stony's correct at all. But it's like it's it's relatively marginal. Yeah, Null Rod's like a, a dumb price. Anyway, let's find someone to host. What did we lose to? We lost to uh Strifo Pile, Punishing Dak, Four Color, Murder You Nonsense. Oh, hey, the Mason Clark is actually streaming Legacy right now. We'll go host him. I think the Miracles brings no rod, Stony. Don't affect uh, Cyber Artifact hit against it, specifically a price reason to play Stony. 
Yeah, the only reason I don't buy uh, the Stony argument is that you bring it in against the uh, the post decks, like Eldrazi post, Karn post, and if they have they have both, you typically both Ugins. Eight mana Ugin generally matters a little less because if they're casting eight mana Ugin, they probably don't really need to get to turn their artifacts back online. But like six mana Ugin being able to exile uh, Stony and not Milrod is like a pretty big deal. But anyway. It's going to wrap up our stream today. List has been feeling pretty strong. Still not 100% on the Crusader. It did have a, a, a good showing today, but I think in both the cases where Crusader brutalized my opponent, like, it didn't matter, like, a huge amount. Like, against, against Dredge, it was probably the strongest thing I could have recruited for, but I think we could have won if we had recruited for, like, a Stone Forge and put in a Batter Skull or something, or just recruited a Wisp and Wisped Infinite Times or whatever. Or like Preladon one to turn off Cabal Therapies. And then against uh, Grixis, I think, or against uh, Strife Opile. We just wanted to close the game fast with Crusader plus GTA, but I think if we had just tutored up a, a Preladon or a Spirit Keeper, it probably still would have been okay as well. But, I mean, Crusader was strong. It's tutorable, which does make it better than Brimass in some spots. But it was reasonably, reasonably happy with everything. This Toma continues to be just exceedingly mediocre. I kind of want it in the deck for curve reasons because I really hate Phyrexian Revoker right now. Like, Phyrexian Revoker is really weak against a lot of the top decks, but I want more two drops. I think Tomic is has the edge over Sarah Avenger right now. And I don't, like... And Sarah Avenger is, like, basically a two, not a two drop also. So, like, this Tomic is not impressive me a lot, but I think it's one of the better options for like curve filling purposes. Yeah, exactly. I do think Stony is just worse for like uh, post reasons and for having having white mana reasons and like no one's bringing in shatters that don't also kill Stony Silence against Miracles or anything. Yeah, Tomic versus Ren Six is like kind of a thing, but it's <clears throat> it's similar to like Revoker versus Ren Six, right? You could you can name Ren Six with your, with your Revoker, but like it's probably not going to last very long. They're not exactly sturdy creatures. Tomic plus, like, Caracas is a thing. It's better against Goblins because I can Crater Maker and Null. I guess that's that's fair. If, if things can destroy colorless cards, but I think that's, like, exactly Crater Maker. And your Goblin matchup is already, like, dog shit, right? <laughs> Just never beating Goblins. Yeah, the Karakas Tomic Synergy is definitely, like, not nothing. But anyway, enough talking about that. Pretty happy with this list overall. Probably going to be playing something very close to this on Saturday. We'll get one last stream in on Friday. To, you know, eventually just snap decide to like play a bunch of random other garbage just said no i should i should lock in my lists but anyway thanks everybody for watching hope you had a good time uh as always the uh recipes giveaway is still going on you type uh exclamation point rip giveaway in the chat to get information on how to enter the contest to uh potentially get a foil rest in peace one of two that i'm giving away once we hit 750 followers I believe we're at 721 right now or something. But yeah, you can follow me on Twitch to enter, follow me on Twitter to enter, retweet that tweet to enter up to three times. But yeah, once we get there, we'll be giving away two foil rips. Uh, I think I already said the follow, subscribe, donate, but if I didn't follow, subscribe, donate, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, if you want to support the channel, go right ahead. I will see you guys all on Friday. Go host uh, the Mason Clark. Have a good one, everybody. Oh, crap, I keep reading. I don't know where the host button went, so I have to actually type slash host the Mason Clark. All right, see you later.